Hi everyone, Christian Awesome here. Today I want to talk to you about something I believe every hairstylist should know how to do, and that's how to hold your scissors. Early in my career, I spent a lot of time watching technical DVDs and studying the work of my mentors. What I found was that in addition to how effortless they made their work look, they all held their scissors the exact same way. I knew that this couldn't possibly be a coincidence, so I studied a bit more into the matter. What I found was that there's a technical reason and a safety reason as to why they all work the exact same way. Technically, it's going to serve as the foundation to all scissor work, and from a safety standpoint, it helps to prevent long-term challenges in both the hands and the wrists. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so before we begin, the first thing we need to do is just talk about some basic anatomy of the scissor, and then how it relates to your hand. So if we were to break the scissor down into its basic parts, the first thing that we have to take into consideration are there, there are two independent blades. This blade right here is called your still blade. The blade right here is called your action blade. This is called the shaft of the scissor, this is the finger hole, and this is the tang. Your index and your middle finger should rest on the shaft of the scissor. Your ring finger inside the finger hole and your pinky finger rests on the tang. When all four fingers are relaxed and fully extended, this should create balance between your scissor. All four fingers need to be relaxed and fully extended on the scissor in order for the scissor to move where you want for it to go. This gives you complete control of your scissor. If your pinky finger is not on the tang, you lose the alternate balance. If only your pinky finger is resting on the tang and your index and your middle finger are not present, your pinky finger does not have the stability to stabilize your scissor in a way where it's controlled. As you can see, there's a little bit of bounce in my scissor. So the four fingers fully extended and the scissor resting just below the second knuckle of your ring finger. Now with your fingers fully extended, your thumb should not be able to reach the action blade. This is because your fingers have three digits and your thumb only has two. It's too short. So what you then do is you lower your scissor to your thumb. That movement looks like this. By lowering your scissor to your thumb, your thumb can now reach the action blade. Now the challenge that most hairstylists make is that their thumb goes into the action blade. What this does is it limits your range of motion. And by limiting your range of motion, you have no choice but then to chomp your scissors. This is where most hairstylists go wrong. By lowering your scissors to your thumb, you then take your thumb and you press against the action blade, creating a tension just below the second knuckle of your ring finger. This tension is what allows you to open and close your scissor without your thumb ever actually entering the action blade. This independent movement of your thumb is what helps you to strengthen your thumb so that scissor over comb, point cutting, slide cutting, and all other technical skills are much easier to do. If you notice, it is a side to side swinging motion of your thumb that allows for the action blade to move, open, and close. Thank you so much for being such a great audience. And I'd like to ask you to commit to using what you've learned here today. Practice creates habits, and make sure you're practicing the right ones. See you soon.